Aerith, Aang, and Naruto. On the surface, it sounds like I'm just picking names out of a hat, but there are a lot more parallels between these characters than you might think. But first, a quick spoiler warning for Final Fantasy VII, and minor spoilers for Naruto and Avatar The Last Airbender. One of the shared commonalities between these characters is that they all come from a life of tragedy. Aang's people were massacred, leaving him as the only surviving member of his clan. Naruto was treated as an outcast by his village for being different. Aerith's past is sort of a combination of both of these. Aerith's people were massacred by Genova, leaving few surviving members of her race. Aerith and her birth mother Ifana were the last known surviving members of the Cetra. When Aerith was about 20 days old, Professor Hojo kidnapped Aerith and her mother and used them in various experiments. When Aerith was 7, she and her mother escaped, but sadly, Ifana died due to the residual effects of all the experiments. Before Ifana died, she was able to give Aerith over to a woman named Almira Gainsborough, who raised Aerith like her own daughter. Due to Aerith's Cetra heritage, she had a connection to the planet that allowed her to hear its voice and feel when people died. This caused the local kids to think that she was creepy and they tended to avoid her. In The Kids Are Alright, a Turk side story, Kyrie tells us that when they were growing up, Aerith spent most of her time alone at the church taking care of flowers. Aerith grew up without any close friends. Despite all three of our case study characters growing up from challenging circumstances, Aerith, Naruto, and Aang have all been described along the lines of carefree, upbeat, and joyful. But why is this the case? If their lives were so full of tragedy, isn't it a bit strange that that type of environment could foster such a positive personality? Well, you see, various studies have found that smiling through the pain has a positive effect in minimizing that pain. In a study by Sarah Pressman and her colleagues, they injected participants with a 25 gauge syringe of a non-harmful substance. They manipulated the facial positions of some of the subjects by having them hold a chopstick in their mouth. They found that the subjects who smiled or grimaced reported around 40% less pain than those who did not. In a similar vein, another study that's highly relevant to Aerith's situation was conducted by Elena Svetiva and her colleagues. In this study, experimenters set up a video call and informed participants that they would be speaking to two students from another university. Each of these students would be given 90 seconds to talk about themselves, with the participant going last. However, unknown to the participant is that the two students from the other university were actually pre-recorded. During the participant's turn to speak, the two students would actively ignore the participant and talk to each other instead. The goal of this study was to measure the effects of being ostracized and excluded, similar to how Aerith was in her childhood. Researchers found that participants who tried to smile through the negative interaction reported higher levels of happiness afterwards than those who did not. So, based on these studies, it would make sense that an upbeat, carefree, and joyful personality could develop from a tragic upbringing. For some people, smiling through the pain is a coping mechanism to reduce negative feelings. Another quality that's shared by the characters of our case study is that at the start of their respective journeys, none of these characters have actually self-actualized. Let me explain. In psychology, there is a motivational framework called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This framework is represented in the shape of a pyramid with five different layers. Each of these layers represents a category of human needs. The hierarchy moves from the bottom upwards and each layer must be satisfied before an individual is able to address the needs of the next layer. The final layer of this hierarchy is called self-actualization. Self-actualization is defined as becoming all that one can be and realizing their full potential. Although the starting points for our three case study characters are different, they all seem to suffer from issues of belonging and self-esteem, found in the middle layers of the pyramid. Due to this, they are unable to reach the stage of self-actualization and fulfill their purposes in life. In psychology, the consensus definition of purpose is described as the following. Purpose is a stable and generalized intention to accomplish something that is at once personally meaningful and at the same time leads to productive engagement with some aspect of the world beyond the self. Research suggests that it is more difficult for those living in challenging circumstances, such as those living in poverty, to identify and pursue their purpose in life. This supports Maslow's hierarchy of needs and suggests that basic needs must be met first before one can seek a higher purpose. We see this behavior in our case study characters as well, specifically in Aerith and Aang, who seem to reject their purpose and run away from their responsibilities. Aerith is aware of her Cetra heritage, but tries to hide from it and reject it. This is detailed in this scene in the original game and in the remake. You're wrong! I'm not an ancient! <sighs> but Aerith, even when you're all alone, don't you hear voices whispering secrets? No, never! 
This is a normal reaction to the overwhelming responsibility that she had to take on at a young age. See, minor stress is considered to be routine, even healthy, in childhood. However, an overabundance of stress has been found to cause detrimental effects such as anxiety. According to evolution counseling therapist Michael Schreiner, running away from responsibility acts as an anxiety reducer. It makes a lot of sense why this would be a source of anxiety for Aerith when you think about it. Aerith's Cetra heritage has caused her nothing but pain for her entire life. It's the reason why her parents were hunted and killed by Shinra, and it's the reason why she's being hunted now. On top of that, it is also the root cause of her ostracism by her peers. According to the study by Svetiva and her colleagues that I mentioned earlier, they found that people who are ostracized develop negative attitudes and opinions toward the source of their ostracization. As a result, it is likely that Aerith developed a hatred for her sexual origin. Aerith also appears to suffer from autophobia, which is an extreme fear of being left alone. Autophobia can be caused by a variety of factors, but some of the ones relevant to Aerith are being ignored and feeling uncared for. The loss of a parent during childhood, and experiencing traumatic incidents such as being Professor Hojo's test subject. During the train graveyard sequence in the remake, we get a good look into Aerith's internal thoughts that we don't see in the original. These internal thoughts are in line with our diagnosis of autophobia. Are you ready? Well, are ya? I'm ready now! Me too! We found you! Uh, you got me. Hey, where's Aerith? I'm ready! I'm ready! As you just saw, Aerith's greatest fear is to find herself being left alone again. With the exception of Elmira, Aerith has only experienced abandonment throughout her life. She has lost both her parents, local children ignored her, and when she finally met someone who accepted and loved her, he died and left her alone again. Despite her happy and cheerful appearance, it is clear that she has not fulfilled the needs of finding a sense of belonging and self-worth. However, this all changes when she meets Cloud and the rest of the party. Aerith! <laughs> We found you. I guess you did. As Eric journeys with the party, she finds friends who truly care about and accept her. For the first time in her life, she has found a place where she belongs. For all the characters in our case study, throughout their respective journeys, they all meet people who care for them and form a support network around them that allow our characters to self-actualize. With the help of her loving support network, Aerith is now able to fulfill her needs of belonging and self-worth. She begins to build the foundations of self-actualization. And so, when the time comes where she learns that she is the only one who is able to stop Sephiroth, she embraces her purpose and runs away from her responsibilities no longer. Class, as always, thanks for checking out VGology. If you enjoyed this video and want more Final Fantasy psychology, then check out these videos linked on the screen. Remember to like and subscribe to check in for attendance. There's a bell. Class dismissed.